see, we've looked at aggregate demand and we've simply taken investment as being autonomous, independent of income and determined outside the model. We now need to take a closer look at investment. And if we decompose it and look at it, we still get an autonomous part. That's a part that doesn't depend on income and it's also a part that doesn't depend on interest rates in, in our model. So it would be driven by things like investor confidence in your economy. Political uncertainty might dampen that, that component. This part here shows you how planned investment changes when the interest rate changes. And we see that that relationship is negative. So over here we could plot an investment schedule. And we could see what happens if the interest rate, say, falls. We can take a given change in the interest rate. And we move, say, from point A to point B. So as the interest rate falls, we see that the level of planned investment spending rises. Why is that? You can think of this like your first year demand curve. This is like the price, um, the price and this is the quantity demanded. Investment here refers to the purchase of capital, buildings, machinery, etc. necessary for for production to take place and you typically have to borrow to finance that so the higher the interest rate the higher the opportunity cost of that borrowing so the lower the level of investment um, demand if the interest rate falls we have a rise in planned investment we're going to now show what difference b makes b is the responsiveness of planned investment to the interest rate we know there's a negative sign but how responsive is planned investment to a change in interest rate. So let's draw a steeper investment schedule and see what, it, what difference that makes in our model. So we're going to trace across the same change in interest rate. Say the interest rate falls by 1% and you move from point A to point B. What is the change in planned investment demand that occurs? It's going to rise again, but you can see that the change here is not very much compared to over here. So this would be a situation where your value of B is large, it's larger. We get a flatter investment demand schedule, showing you that for a given change in the interest rate, inv planned investment is much more responsive. As to, opposed to this situation where B is smaller, we get a steeper investment schedule showing you that a given change in the interest rate leads to a smaller proportional change in planned investment. And why do we care about that? We care because this in turn is going to affect how much aggregate demand and income changes in the economy um, and will affect the slope of our IS curve. Please note one last thing, that because investment now more fully is not just eyeball, I bar minus BI. When we write out our equation, we need to take this whole um, expression into, we need to take it into account. So for instance, if we think about our equilibrium level of income, it was equal to the multiplier in the presence of government with the proportional tax times by the total level of autonomous spending. So once again, it's the same. The only difference, though, is you need to subtract this BI from your total level of autonomous spending. And in fact, this component here, A bar minus BI, is also the intercept of the aggregate demand curve.